I'm gonna give you a simple checklist that if applied correctly will make you look like a professional developer even if you started coding yesterday. So beginner developers are beginners because of silly clues they sprinkle throughout their code that make them look, well, inexperienced. If you won't fix this, I can guarantee one thing, you'll probably never get a job and all your efforts will go to waste. So my advice for you is to follow and revisit this checklist every couple of weeks or whenever you finish a coding project and you'll be writing quality code, which in turn will make you a six figures remote developer and help you start your journey towards financial freedom, as it did for me and many of my clients. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna give you a notion with a bunch of resources and the actual checklist that uh, I'm gonna share with you in this video. You can integrate one step at a time, so don't become overwhelmed thinking that you have to do everything from the get-go. These mistakes that I'm gonna share with you are very common in fact all my clients are making them even though i always tell them like remember to do this remember to do this right they never do them because you know that's how humans are we we make mistakes but that's why they have code review uh, from me because i'm a coding guru and i sell a mentorship program you can check out my mentorship by clicking the first thing in the description let's start with the first thing which is doesn't format or clean their code so check this code out uh, if you have any experience with JavaScript, even with HTML, you know that indenting your code is extremely important. It's not important for the actual compiler, the you know, JavaScript that is reading your application or, or and whatnot. The browser doesn't care about the indentations and whatnot. But the person who cares about is you from the future or other people that will be collaborating with you. Uh, and you need to understand that coding is not a solo sport, it's a team sport. And the way you write your code is extremely important because you don't want to write code for a machine. You want to write code for other people so other people can understand it. And indentation is a big part of that because if you just look at this, look how horrible this code looks like. You cannot tell where this if statement is. You cannot tell what is part of that if statement. And again, this code here is very minuscule, little, tiny. But in a bigger application, when you start forgetting uh, to indent your code and whatnot, your code is going to become absolutely impossible to read. So I found an example on LinkedIn. And again, this is the repo where I grabbed this code from. Uh, Brandon doesn't know about this concept of like indenting your code. He leaves new lines that don't make any sense. He has a very dirty coding style. And you might be saying to yourself, hey, this is not a big deal, this is not a big problem. And you are saying this because you are inexperienced. But a senior developer, when they will look at your code, when you know, when you'll have an interview or whenever a recruiter is gonna pass your GitHub profile to a proper developer, you'll be judged on every single aspect of your coding. Like for example, here there is an empty space. I just noticed this. Like people, Senior developers are obsessed with the details and they will pick up on every small thing. They will pick up, they'll try to find a reason to not hire you. And whenever you live in unindented code or like badly indented code, you are giving them a reason to not hire you. And again, it sounds like, wow, this guy is making such a, such a huge deal out of this. And I understand why you would say that. But also think about it if I'm right, remove your feelings from this and think about if I'm right or wrong, okay? Uh, and if you don't believe me, just go ahead and create extremely badly indented code and see how far that will get you. You'll be having so many difficulties trying to debug and understand your code that you'll hate your life. Then the next sign of an inexperienced developer is the fact that you are leaving console logs everywhere. So console logs are extremely useful tools that you should be using whenever you develop something because you wanna be able to have a sneak peek inside your code just so you can understand what's actually happening. But once you finish your application, you should remove all your console logs because it's gonna make your code harder to debug. Why is that? Let's say you have a huge application with hundreds of files and then you forgot console logs everywhere. When you'll actually need a console log to understand the value and what's happening, you won't be able to detect it because you have so many messages in your console. You just, just think about it. I had this problem myself. Uh, when I was an inexperienced developer in my first job, I had such a hard time getting to the point of what I was trying to do that day because I had so many console logs everywhere. And then you could also leak out secrets. 
if you teach yourself this bad habit to leave console logs everywhere, you might end up leaving some sort of API key, okay, which is a secret. You might leak out secrets that might cost your company millions of dollars. You have inconsistent use of single or double quotes. Why that might be a big deal, you might be asking. One of the biggest traits of a good developer, in my opinion, is consistency. And one of the first signs that someone is inconsistent is the fact that they are using either single or double quotes in the same application. So you can use single quotes in your entire application or you can use double quotes in your entire application. I'm fine with both. But the problem is when you start to mix them, okay? That's when you are telling people that you are inexperienced, that you don't have consistency in your approach towards solving a, solving a problem. And now when you put all this together, as you can see here, we have this massive code that is weirdly indented. We have a, a mix of um, single quotes, double quotes. You don't know what exactly is happening and when and where. It's very messy, okay? We have console logs everywhere. This code is extremely difficult to debug, but you can just right click, format your code, and then you'll be good to go. Now, this is a fucking mess, I forgot to say. The next point is that um, an inexperienced developer doesn't put any thought whatsoever into how they name their variables and their functions. And here, look at this code. It's well written, right? Everything is like formatted properly. We have uh, the right indentation and whatnot, but you cannot tell what this function is actually supposed to be doing, even though the code is correct. Why? Because the names are completely off. And now you might be saying, oh, but I'm not gonna write bad variable names and bad function names. And that's where you're wrong. Because whenever you are coding by yourself all the freaking time, you don't even know if another person can understand it. This happens every single day when I do code reviews for my clients. They write some code that makes sense to them and then they send it to me. And I'm like, bro, what did you write here? Why do you have this? short version of button, why did you put this in this way, why did you name this in this way, I cannot understand it. So if your code doesn't really like English, it's bad code. Another problem that I see with the beginner developers is that they end up writing a lot of code and they never extrapolate the logic uh, into smaller functions. So they end up having like a huge block of like 100, 200, 300 lines. And that code is very difficult to understand. But if the junior developer would take some time to extract the logic and put it from here, there, call this function in a meaningful way, call this variable in a meaningful way, if the junior developer would do that, they would actually stand out. Because this takes thought, right? It takes some effort. This doesn't come easy. This is the hard part of software engineering, arranging your code in a meaningful way. And again, I'm gonna leave here, um, a link to a Notion page where I'm gonna show you more code that's right, that's bad, code that's transformed from ugly to good. You'll actually see a video of me refactoring a student's code. Another sign of a junior that is inexperienced is that they, they usually leave unused functions and variables sprinkled in their application. So for example, here we have get random, which is not used. We have reverse string, which is not used. We have general, generate special characters, which, which is not used. And again, these uh, little functions here, they are signs for other developers that you might end up using them, but in fact, you just forgot to remove them. And you will end up bloating your application and your code with unuseful stuff. You'll just make other people's life way harder. Another thing that I didn't put here is uh, the fact that people leave commented out code in their code without any reason. So whenever you leave a piece of code commented out, you have to leave a reason, which is another comment, above it where you explain why that code is in there. Otherwise, you are just leaving artifacts and you are creating confusion for other developers. Now, potential fixes for what I showed you so far is that you can format your code with the built-in tools of your code editor. So if you're using VS Code, you can just right-click and format your code. You can use Prettier, you can use linters. So these are things that you can actually do, but most people don't do them because they think they are not important. But you can literally fix most of this stuff with the click of a button. But you should also have this approach in the back of your mind to write the code the right way. Now let's talk about Kiss and Drive. 
So dry means don't repeat yourself. So again, scan the QR code and I'm gonna show you how I'm converting this code from the left side to the right side. And here, as you can see, the student, this is a code from one of my students, he is actually repeating himself four times. And the only difference between all these functions is the symbol for the mathematical operation. And we also have, as you can see, a bad example. So he has a function called subtract and the variable is called sum. Right, as you can see, like it doesn't make sense. But beginners leave this everywhere because they don't understand, they don't realize, they are, they are unaware of these problems. They are unaware about what is important and what is not. And here, as you can see, probably it's almost the same amount of code, but my code is reusable. I'm not repeating myself, right? And here's another example where we uh, can fix the repetition of our code. And as you can see here, we have this map and we are multiplying each number by two. Fair enough. Here, we are extrapolating that logic into a function called double. And you might be right saying that I end up writing more code because we have an extra three lines of code compared with this. But in the context of a bigger application, we need to not repeat ourselves. We need to teach ourselves to do the right thing even when we are building a very small Lego piece. You'll leave this in a code test. You'll have a take home code test and you'll be asked to build some sort of application like a to-do app in React and whatever. And because you are not trained to see these problems, you'll start leaving them in your code and then you'll fail an interview for absolutely zero reason. Another example of don't repeat yourself that I found uh, on uh, LinkedIn. Again, Brandon, I'm sorry about it, bro. But here, as you can see, he's writing this seven times and we can just extrapolate this. We can use some JavaScript magic to only write one thing once. Now, why is it important to not repeat ourselves? Well, when you start repeating yourself a lot throughout a bunch of files, uh, throughout your application, you'll start to introduce bugs. And Trying to fix a bug in one place is going to break something else in another place and another place and another place. But if you have everything in one place and it's only one thing that you reuse all the time, you can just, you can just fix that main thing right then and there. Yeah? And then your code is going to be harder to maintain. If you have to change one thing in seven places, imagine how much uh, mm -hmm. mental effort you actually have to put into this. Programmers are lazy and when you stop repeating yourself, you're actually becoming a proper lazy person. So the examples that I showed you here are obvious, I hope. And some, some examples are very hard to pick up. You have to be extremely refined with your knowledge and that's gonna come with time. That's why people want developers with experience because when you have experience, you start to see things that are you know, hidden to the untrained eye. If you are still watching this video, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm curious to see um, what your thoughts are about this subject so far. I know there are a bunch of people that are right now on TikTok trying to find another magic trick that's gonna make them six figures right away overnight and they will miss these things and then they'll make those mistakes and then they'll go on Reddit and say, oh, it's hard to get a developer job. The next point, the next principle that I think is very important for you to know as a beginner developer is KISS, which stands for keep it simple, stupid or keep it stupid, simple. So the point of this is to simplify the code and to write only enough code and your code should also be intuitive. Again, I'm gonna leave some resources, so just scan the uh, QR when it's gonna come up again at the end of this video, and you'll have more information about these principles uh, in that notion. An example of where people don't keep their code simple and intuitive is when they use nested ternaries. Trust me, your boy, in my first job, man, I used to write so many nested ternaries because I thought I'm clever and, you know, witty and I know how to use the built-in tools of JavaScript. I wanted to flex on the other developers that were actually Python developers. And they all thought, oh, I'm so cool, I'm so great. But, you know, coming back to this code after a few months was impossible to understand. Like, look at this. If you don't have the code on the right, like trying to understand this might take you five, 10 minutes. Those are minutes that you could spend doing something more productive. This takes from your energy, from your uh, concentration power. 
But if you look on the right, oh, this is actually easy to understand. And then we can make that even better because we also want to get rid of nested if statements whenever we can. So we can transform this into this. Yeah, maybe we are repeating ourselves a little bit. Maybe we can extrapolate some of this logic into some variables and whatnot so we can make this a bit more easy to understand. But still, this here is better than this. I hope you can understand that, right? And I want you to get some key takeaways from this presentation so far. The context matters a lot. So sometimes you have to write something in a bad way because in that context, it makes sense. So this is not a black or white kind of thing, okay? This is more like art rather than a perfect science. And the list that I showed you here is not exhaustive. This is just made for like a quick 18, 20 minute YouTube video. And uh, this is not my entire knowledge, you know, but I just wanted to make you aware of these problems. So then you can start, you know, thinking for yourself because at the end of the day, you cannot rely on me. You cannot rely on anyone. You cannot rely on, on the internet. You have to be able to think for yourself to figure out what's good and what's bad. And then with time, with code reviews, with mentors that are around you, you'll be able to pick up the good from the bad, you know what I mean? And experience will refine your senses. It's extremely important. And then code review from a mentor like myself, yes, will help you keep these problems under control before they become habits. Because the worst thing is to start making these mistakes every single day for months, for years, and you will develop so many bad habits that are almost impossible to get rid of. So it's easier to get a new habit right? Like removing the console logs uh, rather than getting rid of a bad habit. Now let's talk about some behaviors of inexperienced developers. So the first behavior of an inexperienced developer is that the inexperienced developer is not asking for help whenever they are getting stuck. So uh, again, I'm going to tell you a story of when I was in my, my second job, I got the opportunity to work with an amazing web development agency. The owner of this development agency was extremely attentive to details. I remember one day I spent eight hours tweaking a cubic bezier because he wanted to make the text fade up and uh, change the opacity from zero to one in a very specific and particular way. So the guy was obsessed with the details. Like I've never met anyone that obsessed. He had OCD. I, I love that guy, uh, but I don't, <laughs> I didn't love working for him because all the work was extremely difficult because it had to be perfect. And sometimes, when I was instructed to make something for, for the projects that I was uh, assigned to, uh, I was stuck for a couple of days, maybe even three, maybe even four days. And I had a huge ego and I didn't want to ask for help because I thought uh, me looking cool is more important than actually delivering the project. And uh, my, the senior developer that I was working with at the time came to me and said, look, I don't care if you are stuck. I'm not gonna judge you in any way, shape or form. The most important thing is for us to deliver the work to the client. If you do not tell me, you are pretty much blocking us from actually getting paid and you are ruining our reputation. So if you're a junior developer, you need to understand that once you get that job, you need to be very explicit and you have to communicate with people whenever something is not going the right way. People are expecting that from you. And if you are right now a self-taught developer and you are coding by yourself, you are creating this bad habit of always trying to figure it out by yourself. At the end of the day, nobody cares about you. People only care about you solving their problems. And if you uh, do not ask for help, you won't be able to solve problems and you'll be fired. And because you don't ask for help, you take forever to solve anything. I remember I was working with a junior at some point, maybe four years ago, and uh, she was taking four, five, six times the time I was able to take on completing the same task. She was never asking for help. She was always like the best. And she ended up getting fired after a couple of months just because she was delaying everyone. Because when you work in a team, you might be working on something that someone else might need. And if you don't ask for help and if you take forever to solve the problem, you are literally blocking the entire team. You go with your friends and then you have a fat friend. That fat friend is gonna be slower than everyone else, right? And it's always gonna be left behind. And at some point you're gonna be like, hey, fat friend, stay in front and we'll all be behind you. Now everyone is gonna be slow. So you have to make the fat friend go faster. 
And if you are the fat friend right now because you're a junior developer, you need to understand that you need to ask for help, you need to develop these good habits, and you need to learn how to be fast. So you wanna be fast and you wanna create quality work, that's when you get paid. Another sign of an inexperienced developer is that they're obsessed over the newest framework library and whatever. There is a guy called Levels.io on Twitter and he makes, I think a million a year using the most boring languages out there. What you create is more important than what you use to create that thing, especially at your level, especially if you are just trying to break into the industry. So focus on learning one thing, learn it really well, build stuff with it. That's why I say build a six month project, because if you do that, you'll try you'll end up understanding the ins and outs of that little thing, that little framework, that little uh, library that you're using. That's way better than knowing a shit ton about every single thing that's out there. You need to understand that there is a lot of marketing and hype in the developer community. And if you fall for it, you'll end up just learning a bunch of stuff forever, ending up literally nowhere. Some key takeaways, there are no silver bullets, as you noticed, there are a thousand of golden BBs right? A thousand little things that will make you a professional developer. A thousand little things that will make you stand out from the crowd of hungry junior developers that frankly have no idea about what it takes to become a web developer. So scan the notion to see the resources that I've been mentioning in this video. This is the QR code. And if you want to be part of my mentorship program because I'm a coding guru, then click on the first thing in the description. We have coaching calls, we have interview prep calls, we have a community of sick people that will help you out. I'll be there to help you out. I have a, a sick course that you can follow. It's easy to understand. It's made for beginners that want to actually transition into tech. So, you know, if you don't want to waste your time, you know, you don't want to waste the next 10, 20 years trying to learn this stuff, then my mentorship program is going to help you out massively. So I would definitely click on the first link and uh, book a call with me or someone from my team and we'll see if you are the right fit for uh, my program. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.